Well, welcome back to part four. Um, hope you're still with us and you're enjoying part one to three. Uh, this time, Lyle, we're going to talk a bit about the River Team because mm. that was a river you kind of moved on to after the after the seven a bit, really. Well, yeah. You know what I, 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 um, y yes and no. Um, what I did, I split my fishing off. Um, I, I had a, 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 um, a spell on the turn because what, whilst I was fishing the lower seven and the middle seven for barbel, I started to hear, you know, the early 90s uh, to mid 90s of this river that I knew, but I always thought as a you know, relatively modest coarse river, mm -hmm. but trout yeah. and salmon. Mm -hmm. uh, but now barbel were turning up. Um, and really by the, the, you know, the early to mid 90s, it was being perceived as a, as a barbel river. Yeah. Um, and not only a barbel river, uh, you know, I was, uh, it, it demanded a different type of fishing to the seven. You know, the, the team now, I mean, you can't, it's very difficult to spot fish on the seven mm. anyway. Mm. Try spotting fish on the lower seven, <laughs> you got no chance. You'd be there waiting a long time. Of course you would. Um, uh, so it gave me uh, an opportunity to fish a river uh, that, that, in a way that the seven could never mm. give me. Mm. And that was watching fish take baits, uh, watching how they, uh, you know, reacted to a particular presentation, to a flavour. I can remember um, in those days, and I'm talking about 93, 94, I suppose, uh, of, of being on the river. And I was using, I'd been using very, very heavily flavoured baits, a uh, 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 luncheon meat on the seven, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, I'm going to see what the reaction is to fish. And my mate. Uh, Adrian, uh, we found this stretch, a BAA stretch, I think it was at um, uh, Broadwas, and we'd spotted these barbel, and the barbel were doing things like barbel do, you know, nobody's fishing for them, and they're drifting, and, you know, from one side, then they all, they'd all almost let go yeah. and drift down, yeah. and then all of a sudden they'd come back yeah. again, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I, I said, throw some bait in. You go upstream, throw some bait about 20 yards upstream, and we'll see how they react. I was expecting them. Now, bear in mind, they're very, very heavily flavoured. It was going to take about two minutes for the bait to get to me, yeah. as we'd worked out, you know, bits of meat hitting the bottom and bouncing down. He took the bait in, fairly biggish pieces, so we could see them. Those baits hadn't even got to the barbel that I was watching, yeah. and there was a reaction. Those fish suddenly became totally different to the way they'd been. They suddenly became more purposeful. They didn't drift about. They became very, very almost stiff uh, in their holding station in the river. And then gradually, they didn't wait for the bait to come to them. Mm -hmm. They intercepted it. Uh -huh. They swam towards yeah. it. So you got the bait coming towards them, these freebies, and the, the barbel all of a sudden being very, very quickly aware, and then the barbel swimming up to take, and they took them. So again, it, it, it allowed me a greater understanding of the species. But more importantly, at that time, it, some very big fish were being mm -hmm. caught. Um, I was starting to catch, uh, you know, what, what even now would be a, a nice team fish, plenty of eights and nines, it, it wasn't unusual to have a 10 and an 11 right. uh, yeah. or a, a 12 in the same session. Um, you'd got the likes of uh, Jill and Andy Orm further downstream uh, catching fish well over 13 pounds. I started to fish a, a, a relatively uh, uh, small stretch and saw some extremely large barbel. Uh, one of them was the one I said, mm. you know, took that bait as it, uh, it went. It, it actually came off my hook and drifted into this deep hole and I could see it and then the barbel came out from a bush and took it. But I saw fish there, uh, uh, there was a group of fish and I think the smallest in that group of about eight fish would have been in excess of 12 pounds yeah, yeah. Uh, with the biggest uh, being possibly 15 or 16. Um, the biggest I had from there uh, was 13, 10. Um, and uh, I, I'd seen fish in there much, much bigger than mm. that. Mm. Uh, so it, it was very inspiring. And I, I said to you this morning off air, you know, that 
this was the time when the team was top five, Barble mm. River. Yeah. It was the time when people were talking about mm. the record Barble coming off the team. And it focused us on that. And it was a lovely way of fishing. Mm. It was a delightful place to be. Uh, you could see the fish, you could stalk them. Uh, it was a difficult river to fish. Uh, because of all the snags and things, I yeah. mean, I was looking. Mm. I, I, my gear went up a, you know, Defcon three almost. <laughs> you know, I was using like two pound test curve short rods and yeah. uh, twelve pound it's line. A lot of hook and hold fish. You oh know, yeah, just to keep yeah. Them out of the snags There was no the runs water. there. Mm. You know, I was I was a touch ledger, and I was used to sit there, no rod rest, and you know the, I used to trigger fish where the line mm. had come over, and I could feel every movement. You know, I could feel when a fish touched the bait almost as if you swam past the bait. And then all of a sudden you get that doo, 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 and, mm. and then it was uh, 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 yeah. and the time Tug that you war. get, yeah. And I'd lose them. Yeah. Um, whether I'd lose them today, I don't know. But they were big fish. Uh, and the environment that, that, that I was catching them in um, really g gave them the edge, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. But enough big fish were caught. But uh, like everything, nothing lasts forever. No. No, so one thing you sort of learn in life, really, isn't it? In all manner of things, yeah, nothing make, lasts forever. Make, make the most of it while you can. Uh, 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 that's right. Um, did I think the team was going to last forever at that time? I, mean, I was fishing the, the lower to mid reaches, you know, Cothridge, mm. Broadwas, Brockhamin, down towards Powick. Probably did. Uh, I didn't perceive any threats, really. Mm. Um, what, what on earth could you, you know, it was a... An SSI, you know, it was a site, a site of scientific interest. It was, it looked like a beautiful Welsh stream, no pollution. I learnt later that, you know, that in fact the river had been quite an industrialised right. river in its day, right. mm. uh, but long before I started to fish it. Um, but gradually, I started to notice the change, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, those fish that I used to take people down to see and say, look, look over there, yeah. there'll be a group of fish. And they'd say, oh, look at that. Yeah. And I'd look, and they're not there. Uh, started to blank, people started to say. Uh, and right up until to modern day standards now, where there will always be a barbel in the river team. I'm pretty mm. sure of that. Yeah. What size they will be, because you've got fish during flood water coming up from the Severn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that colonisation instinct of the barbel will always push it to pastures near. Mm. How long they stay in the river by natural means or fell, I don't know. Um, the, the barbel numbers are definitely not there mm. as they were, mm. whatever that reason is. Mm. You know, predation, um, abstraction. A lot of people say that it's suffered from abstraction. Yeah, it has. Most rivers have. Um, habit, uh, uh, habitat loss, definitely. I mean, the Barbell Society invested uh, thousands of pounds into, um, you know, uh, redeveloping natural habitat of woody debris, yeah. gravels yeah. on their stretch um, uh, d down at, um, you know, towards Powick at Bransford. At Bransford. Mm, yeah. um, but it didn't make that much difference because the barbel weren't there. And mm. then you start hearing of Bransford Angling Club, you've just mentioned. Mm. It was dead men's shoes to get mm. in there. Yeah. Yeah. They folded yeah. because the, mm. there's no anglers to join the club because the anglers would come far and far, yeah. far and wide, yeah. join the club to fish for the barbel on the team. Yeah. No barbel. The guest houses that used to pepper and all the way up the team valley have now been reconverted back into homes, the bed and breakfasts that, that you know, um, used to service the anglers coming yeah. up from London and mm, mm. made of people that used to come for holidays to the team yeah. to fish for barbel, mm, you know. Mm. It's gone and, uh, and it's, a, it's a sad state of affairs. Yeah, I'm broken hearted with it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's kind of symptomatic of a, of a lot of rivers, isn't it? I mean, it we're, is. we're lucky that you know, we've all got motor. Well, most of us have got motor cars, and, yes. and we can travel further afield. And, and we're still lucky that there's rivers like the Wye and the Trent um, that are still at the top of the game. But yeah. there's a lot of rivers that, you know, in, in my lifetime have come oh, and yeah. gone. Really come oh yeah, gone. a matter of a short length of time. I mean, even in the last 20 years, you know. I mm. mean, yeah, look at the Kennet. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, you, you, Kennet was like the 
barbel mecca not only beautiful thick barbel but big barbel yeah barbel yeah. to satisfy my desires you yeah. know yeah. big big fish yeah. and i think the the reasons are many fold they i mean are. i'm not going to you know we're not going to sit here and say it's one thing or the other no. and you know what most people know what what that one thing is that's a hot topic at the moment but it's in my opinion certainly it's not i, I think you're right many things i i, I think you're right and uh, I, I think you have to talk of predation uh, as a whole um, rather than one particular thing whether whether that's you know uh, signal crayfish taking mm. you know eggs or goose anders uh, you know magansas taking mm. or cormorants taking fry or up the other end of the scale you know uh, otters and mink um, but there's also we also have to take into account that that combined with other problems is going to result in one thing that is loss of fish yeah yeah loss of fish uh, and something yeah. needs to be done and um, you know looked at and I, I, I personally don't think that just putting in a bucket full of uh, immature barbel it's good PR and a lot of people uh, would see that as a positive thing but I, I, I'm all for stocking rivers but let's find out why the original mm. stock mm. has gone first yeah, yeah definitely know. definitely Anyway, let's just talk about yes. some bright stuff. <laughs> I'll go and hang myself <laughs> now. <laughs> um, I'm fishing. Yeah. I mean, we, uh, the trouble is we all get pigeon dogged, don't we? Yeah. Well, I know yeah. that you love all your fishing and do all sorts of other stuff. So I tell do. us a bit about what else you've been doing, well, particularly on the 7th. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm, uh, am I, I mean, the, the, the buzzword at the moment is all-rounders. There are some genuine mm. good all-rounders mm. uh, that, 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 that still fish the old-fashioned way. Um, Just to me, I, I, I tend to fall into this trap, and I know a lot of people do. You tend to be an all-rounder that fishes a bolt rig for everything, and I fall into yeah. that trap, and I have to try and force myself to say, no, I'm going to go tench fishing on a float today, yeah. or I'm going to trot down the river for... I don't have that problem. Yeah. Uh, no, I, you don't. I'm yeah. a, bit, a bit long in the tooth and a bit old-fashioned. It's like, I mean, this swim here is one of my favourite chub swims. I've had lots of fours and fives out of here, and I still love to fish with you know, a quiver tip. <laughs> Anglers have figured out to strike for a start off. <laughs> I still like to strike. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd like to think I'm like a, a, a mini all-rounder. There are some all-rounders that do sea fishing and loads of other stuff. Don't do much carp fishing, if any, these days. Um, I tend to obviously fish for barbel, perch. I love big perch. Um, and I think, it, like the River Severn, mm. whilst we talk about the decline of its barbel and barbel numbers like other rivers uh, during that time other species have, have come on and mm. one of those species mm. is perch right. you mm -hmm. know I can take you to swims including this one where you know it, it wouldn't be uh, uncommon to catch a three pounder right. mm. or bigger uh, only just you know not far up river from where we're fishing I've had them to 314 which is my biggest mm. river seven foot or well, biggest perch ever uh, you know magnificent fish um, but I love my chub fishing. Uh, as much as I'm part of the Barbel Society, which is great, you know, we try our best. I'm also a member of the Chub Study Group. Uh, it's a complete antidote to Barbel fishing, mm. the Chub Study yeah. Group. Yeah. Great bunch of lads, um, and I, I like that. Uh, so I, I'm going to do more chub fishing. Um, again, roach fishing on the middle seven here has benefited from the Barbel anglers. Mm -hmm. You know, feeding the river up with high protein pellets, mm -hmm. the roach have mm -hmm. really come on, and I've got friends that regularly catch two pound yeah, roach. It's, it's, a, it's amazing people don't realise how much roach like fish meal. That's and right. That's, that's, oh, uh, they benefited know, without yeah, a doubt. All fish, you know, they're they're left alone. Good food. Yeah, and they're yeah, left yeah. alone, aren't yeah, they? You imagine that they've got roach here and chub to a degree, they probably just feed off pellets and never get caught. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, got um, life of Riley. Got yeah. life of Riley, yeah. got the best yeah. of both worlds. Um, so, and I love my tench fishing, um, I, I will fish for anything. I mean, I hate it when people call bream snots, because I love bream. I wanted to catch bream when I was a kid, yeah. and yeah. I like bream now. I, I don't ill treat bream, um, you know, and I, I, I don't look on any fish as a nuisance, you know. I hate the term mud pigs for car. <laughs> I hate it. It's so disrespectful, because yeah. within me, there is still 
that young boy would have given his left arm to catch yeah. a car. Yeah. Never mind a, a monster car, yeah. five pound car. That would have been like the, you know, the, the, the beginning and end of my life all yeah. those years ago. So yeah. I love my barbel fishing. Um, they still inspire me. I don't think I'll ever catch anything bigger than I have. I'm not a traveller, I'm not a fish chaser. Mm. I always try to get the best out of what I've got, mm. Mm. like the Seven, the Middle Seven, the Lower Seven, the Warwickshire Haven, or the Still Waters. I've got no interest whatsoever of, of going to a river and somebody saying, look, if you cast out there, I've baited up for three weeks, there's a 15 that lives there. Yeah. I've had a 15-3 from the Lower Seven. I've had lots and lots of 13s and 12s and 11s. Will I ever, could I aspire to get a 16, 17 pounder? I'd love to, but I don't think I will. Mm, mm. I just enjoy my fishing. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, somebody said, and I can't remember the person was, somebody said to somebody once, what's your favourite music? And they said, it's whatever I'm listening to at the time. Exactly. And I'm that's exactly me with my mean. fish. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. You know, if I'm yeah. down here chub fishing, I don't treat them as second best or anything. I'm a chub fisherman yeah, that day, yeah, or a yeah, barbel fisherman, yeah. or a tench fisherman. Yeah. Um, so I am a bit of an all-rounder, not like some that you, you mm. know, you, you see that yeah. are true, and, and are very, you know, fanatical in where they go, and they, they're like butterflies of here, there, everywhere. Mm. Um, a bit like me. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 I, I tend to have the opposite philosophy. I tend to live my life and. The grass is always green, which is a mistake a lot well, of the time. Well, well, I don't know so much. I mean, you know, I, I think we've all probably gone through that. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, in my 60s now. Life, there are certain times when life changes, where values change. And I've reached that time now. I'm far more relaxed mm. Uh, mm. about my fishing. There's still the focused specimen hunter within me. And when I'm... When I'm fishing, you know, I, you know, fishing one rod, my centre fin, and I've got a big piece of meat on, or double boilies, or whatever, and that that rod nods and that reel goes, especially on the lower seven, yeah, yeah. I, my heart rate still goes up. Yeah. I don't go, oh, you know, I've had loads of these. My heart rate still goes yeah, up. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a wrong way or a right way, mate. No, no. just do, do whatever just you in, enjoy. Do yeah. whatever you enjoy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, we're very, very fortunate where we live. We're very, very fortunate for, uh, you know, uh, the, the hobby, the pastime that we've got. And remember, again, somebody's described fishing as, you know, a, a worm at one end and a fool yeah. at the other. And that about sums it up. Yeah, I've got, yeah. no, got no great opinions yeah. of myself. No. My grandkids think I'm an idiot. Yeah. My kids think I'm a bigger idiot. Yeah. So... Well, my wife thinks, <laughs> thinks I'm absolutely nuts, but she's well. At least I know where you we are. are well, and you're not getting right. into trouble. So. Exactly, yeah. exactly. No long yeah. mate, be so, and yeah. you know, uh, just enjoy it. And I just hope we can get out of this hot spell as soon as possible yeah. and get back to normal, whatever that is. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I think that's probably a great place to wrap it up. So, cheers, Lyle. You're that welcome, was fantastic, mate. mate. Thank you I've very enjoyed much for your it. time. Yeah. Um, Hope you enjoyed that, everyone, and uh, found it as interesting as I did. So, um, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much now. Bye bye. Bye bye.